For generations you've slept. No purpose, no call to wake you. But now, something has risen from the ruins of the old war. When the Grenier ship is landing, do you think they'd look at you like this? Or like this? Either way, it's gonna haunt me in my dreams. The twin queens, the sisters, have sent their most beloved commander, Bor, on an urgent mission. To protect the twisted crusade they have begun. To transform the scattered colonies into an empire. To see that the Tenno, hidden and asleep, will never awake. I got caught. Notice. They are coming through the gate. Notice. I see, so you tell them who the wrinkled nutsacks are, but when it comes to Schrodinger's Warframe, you're silent on the matter? What kind of- This is where you choose your first of many Warframes. Let me explain your options. Your first choice is Excalibur, your second, Mag, and your last, Volt. With each Warframe, they are given an initial description in the top right, and you are presented with five abilities, including their passive. I trust you to read each ability, but I will give the important notes, meaning that beyond your reading, the things I note are of special significance. For all Warframes, you should know two things. 1. That every Warframe is a toolkit, and you are intended to pick up as many toolkits to fit into one large tool arsenal as you wish. 2. Every number you see, whether it be Drain, also known as Energy Consumed, Duration, Range, Radius, Damage, Almost anything can be raised and lowered to suit your future needs, but that will be for a later video. Moving on to the Warframes themselves, let's start with Excalibur. His weapon, the Exalted Blade, his fourth ability, mixes with his three other active abilities, amplifying and working with them. He's excellent as an all-around choice, sporting a swordsman archetype. As for Mag, she is the most complicated. To make this shorter, her third ability benefits her second ability by increasing its damage output. This combo should be run whenever you wish to end a specific enemy quickly. Her third ability simultaneously replenishes you and your allies' shields, and she can bullet jump, a term that will be explained later, to collect loot in an area. Lastly, she is a crowd control buff debuff archetype. As for your last choice, Volt, his most frequently used and important ability is his speed boost which not only boosts movement speed, but melee attack speed as well as reload speed with ranged weapons. His stationary shield is also of note, but you can read the rest and decide for yourself in this context. Volt is a high damage output archetype. And speaking of decisions, there are two schools of thought when picking your starter. The first would be the fun factor. What do you think would be fun for you to play? Each choice is excellent and none of these starters has a bad ability set you are more than welcome to pick the one you instinctively want. However, it is worth noting that you can get all of these Warframes over time within the game. Eventually, you will have all three. That being said, Volt is the most difficult to get and will take the most gameplay time to get access to. If you wish to pick a Warframe that will save you time in the long run, Volt is the optimal choice. For the purposes of this series, our starter will be Volt. Wake up, Tenno. Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
I see the Lotus has tried to wake you. Pity she's too late. You're my prize now, Denno. What are you gonna do, Vor? Eat him? No! We are taking this one with us! What has he done to you? I can't lose another Tenno. I'm surging your Warframe's power systems. Um, Quick! Use your power. Defend yourself. She means you have infinite power for a bit. Match one. Use your power. Now. An extraction ship is on its way, but the Grenier will be hunted off. Alright, no more infinite lightning. That doesn't last very long. From now on, you need those, but you're full right now. Oh, and um, look behind you. That's ammo. You don't have any guns right now, so you don't need it, but just know this. Right above me is your health. You're at full right now, so you don't need this, but later. Yes! Your first melee weapon. While the intricacies of damage types will certainly be for another video, they're somewhat unimportant here. You will probably use both of these weapons anyway at some point, and you will receive better weapons rather quickly as well. So whether you're an efficiency-minded player and or a fun-minded player, the choice is the same. Blunt or sharp. Okay, okay, calm down there, buddy. Something not mentioned at this point, nor anywhere, is that stealth is nearly non-existent in most cases. In fact, as the game progresses, you're encouraged to get less and less stealthy, with a few exceptions that will be presented to us here. Without context, some of those would be spy, rescue, sometimes, and a cache of weapons ahead. stealth based warfighters. Also, you're as silent walking or sprinting as you are crouching, so get your stealth kills as fast as you want. As for secondary choices, the same rules apply as the choice with your melee weapon with the new difference of stealthiness. Throwing knives do not make as much noise as a firearm as one might imagine. Again, the choice is mostly style based given the context they give about melee weapons being applied here. Good. The extraction point is up ahead. Hurry before Vor finds out you've escaped. Salvage team, why have you not reported in? So you need to... no, no. <sighs> Anyways, you need to slide as an essential movement tool in a chain of movements that will be explained in a later video. You can slide along the ground exactly how it says. Oh, and do it while sprinting for a longer slide. Also, the yellow marker ahead is an objective marker. Typically, you go in that direction at this stage. Take what you can. You will require resources to build yourself into a diverse and effective warrior. Note that when you swing your melee weapon, your melee weapon stays out, but when you left click, your secondary weapon comes out. This is known as quick swapping, and is a standard feature of the game. These are supply lockers, and they will glow green if they are unlocked, orange if they are locked. Same goes for doors. You made it. There's the extraction ship. That was a fresh coat of paint. Hmm. 
You're not ready to face Bor now. Use your melee weapon to block the beam and get inside. You read the floating text. Face the enemy. You need to avoid Bor's beam or divert it with your melee weapon, Tenno. My decrepit heart is pounding. This one is stronger than the rest. Lock the area down. This Tendo is mine. Quick, get to the console and release the lockdown. Do that, and I will guide you to your old ship. It's your only chance. Yeah, yeah, I get the new slash old ship. The I want queen space wants space. to destroy you, but I need to know more. I'm calling it now. You want to do this. You will have to face Bor another time, when you're fully restored. Anyway, while I've been in breakthrough time, I'd like to take this pocket of time to inform you that our next section involves movement. It will only involve the tutorial explained material until I make a separate video specifically explaining movement in Warframe and how to utilize it, which will come out soon. While I need not tell you what the game already prompts you, it is important to note that almost any movement mechanic you discover is faster than sprinting on a base level, even if it's used suboptimally. So if you feel that you're ready to move quicker, feel free to make use of sliding, wall dashing, and double jumping. Again, with primary weapons it's somewhat of the same story, though contrary to logic the bow certainly hits harder per shot than the automatic rifle. However, the bow does shoot far slower. Take your pick. As for the materials you've been picking up from containers, minerals, intestines, and whatever else you may find them in, crafting will also be in its own separate video explaining it in full detail. Since you have no access to crafting at this point in the game, however, know this. Pick a spot anywhere on the spectrum of must loot the entire map to I'm sure if I need more crafting materials, I will find them when I need them. That spot is fine. Pick your playstyle. While rambling about crafting, I accelerated time too far and neglected to mention swapping weapons when they came up. However, it was a tad self-explanatory. Feel free to get creative with the swapping from primary to second, however. Ah, I see. We're about to run into the hacking console. For Grenier, it's pretty simple. Hit spacebar when the arrow passes each pedal off from the center. <laughs> Touching you? What? Are my senses deceiving me? Operator, is that you? Enemy reinforcements are here. Ship Cephalon, we require immediate extraction. The operator is in danger? I will need a few moments to cycle the engines. Tendo, are you afraid? You cannot hide from these old eyes. I've marked you. You will return to me. Marines inbound. After a brief tussle with the local Grenier population, you will find yourself lifting off into space on your very own ship. Let's go there now. Ah, the daily tribute system. This time, this hot piece of garbage gave you something, but other currently strangers will give you things each day you visit Warframe. It even has rewards for certain numbers of days played, like unique weapons. I am Ordis, ship Cephalon. A shadow of my former self. I cannot serve the operator in such a condition. Order me to self-destruct. I will understand. The Grenier are ravenous for this old technology. It is superior to theirs. Perhaps there are systems left in the orbiter compartment? Look at this madness. Those savages. Components have been removed. The lower orbiter compartments have no life support. Why did the operator abandon me? Arsenal management could be restored if the operator wishes it. The 
you honor, Ordis. Now I can supply the operator with better modified firepower. Oh, the violation. Those have been looted as well. We need to figure out what Captain Vor has done to you and stop him, but we'll need help. I found a communication segment we might salvage for your ship. When you are ready, activate your navigation system. Ordis hopes the operator will punish the Grenier for dismantling it. Ugh, I hate waiting to talk for that long. Anyway, the following video after this will be short and explain everything that you are visually given at this point in the game. And either in the same video or a subsequent one, I have video explaining what you just unlocked in the arsenal. Then we shall progress. See you then.